Hello, hello everybody! Today I'm going to show you how to make a title, like a text effect. It's been a while. Uh, this one is f to do something kind of cinematic, you know. Uh, it was a request, so I've tried to do my best for this. The first thing you're going to want is to make a title clip. And you're going to write your title. So I'm using a background from Corsica, so my title is going to be just going to be Corsica. Very original, I know. Uh, I'm using this font here, le Lemon Milk, but I want it to be like a bit wider between the letters, so I'm gonna... Like, I think this looks nice. Maybe a tiny bit bigger. Like this. Let's say that's good. You're gonna want to add a black uh, rectangle in the background that's gonna be useful for blur. Because if you have blur add blur on a title clip, it's gonna not work with the letters, with the transparency, I guess. So you're going to want a black background. If you're using black letters, you're going to want a white background. Um, so Alt-R to make a rectangle. You make your rectangle and you put it in the back. So now I have my clip here and I'm going to put it on top of my um, background. Here I'm going to add a composition. Uh, I'm just going to add Composite and Transform as I usually do, and put the compositing to screen. Nice. So right now I have all of the letters, and I want to have all of the letters separated. So this is not going to be as easy as with After Effects. You're going to have to take a while. You're going to use your favorite tool, rotoscoping, drag it onto your clip. Now you have the effect here, and you're going to select uh, your first letter. So here is going to be C and close the thing. Then we're going to add a blur effect. So it instantly disappears because it blurs too much by default. I'm just going to reduce the blur and you can see that uh, it makes it more or less blurry. So at the beginning I want it like a lit like quite blurry and then I'm going to add a keyframe and put it to maybe not zero because I like it a little like softer on the edge. So like maybe like 50 or something. I don't know, 60 looks great. Um, for now, I'm not too worried about the keyframes like when it is yet. We'll time everything later. Third thing you want to do is add a transform effect to make it move. So you can just close these, we'll reduce them. So here we add one keyframe at the end that's going to be the right one, like the, the final one. And at the beginning I want it way bigger, so maybe like 800 persons or something like that. Uh, you can see that you can't see your letter anymore, so you're going to just slide it to the right because you know the C is a bit to the left by default. Okay. Nice. What you can see is there's a bit of a mistake with the rotoscoping, so you can go back here um, and change it a tiny bit to the right and it will be better. Also, I might just reduce the blur because I don't need it to be that big and it will just help a lot. Yes. So, back to transform. Um, so, it's very big and then it's going to be going too small, like We'll just hmm. and at the same time it's going to be less blurry so it's already quite nice uh, I might want a little bit of a rotation for example at the beginning so I can add like I don't know 10 here uh, you can see that it's not in the center anymore so you can recenter it with this um, and I might actually put it a bit more to the left yes Okay, so this is uh, looking great. Uh, what you can do is change the keyframes to smooth. Because as long as you don't have too many keyframes, smooth is al almost always better. Um, so same for all of the keyframes you made for now. Rotoscoping has no keyframes, so it's all good. Uh, I'm going to pre-render and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so this should be enough. Let's play it. 
it's actually quite nice already. Um, I might make it a bit faster. I don't know, let's rewatch it. Yes, uh, like maybe a third faster or something. So we'll just drag this here and drag this one here as well. Uh, I'm going to pre-render again because then I'm just going to copy and paste the effects so I want this one to be perfect. Okay, so I kind of like it like that. I think I might uh, go with this. So then next step is all of the other letters. So I'm going to just take both of these things and copy them and paste them. Uh, maybe with a slight um, translation because you might not want all of your letters at the same exact time. And then I'm going to go to the rotoscoping, go back to the first frame and change. Oh yeah, if you want, you can also um, hide the transform effect. Then you go back on the rotoscoping effect and you can change it to select the I, well, the O, sorry. It's not an I, it's an O. So, well, the next letter, you know. Okay. And then it should work perfectly. I'm going to add back the transform. And now you can see like first is the C and then the O is coming. But you may not want the O to have the exact same keyframes still, like the same positions and stuff. So you can go to the first keyframe uh, of transform and maybe change the size to 700 so that it's a bit different. Uh, and then move it a bit to the center. I mean, rotation isn't going to do much here because it's an O. So I'm just going to set it to zero because then I won't have like weird stuff happening. Uh, a bit higher. Nice. And then I'm going to copy and paste it again. So I just have to paste it. And now I'm going to select the next letter, which is, uh, I believe it is an R. So I go back to the scoping. Okay, well, I guess you get it. So I'm just going to go very fast now for all of the rest of the letters and we'll talk about uh, again at the end. I just realized one thing. You can see there's a black background here. Um, that is because the composite and transform is not on the v1 you need it to be on the background so it's v1 and you can do the same for this one and uh, well this one is automatically on the on v1 but yeah you want the composition track to be v1 also at one point you won't have enough tracks so just add a track by right clicking insert track okay Okay, so I'm done with the title. I just pre-rendered, so we'll see what it looks like. So honestly, it's not bad. One thing I find, though, is that they we can really notice them when they appear. Um, so I will change the opacity at the very beginning. Also, what I will do is move everything like a few frames to the right uh, like compared to this so that uh, the title appears after the yeah and yeah you can see that the C like just appears weirdly so I'm gonna change the opacity at the beginning uh, actually I might do it with composite and transform so uh, what I could do is either I add it uh, here I add a frame like here, and then I change the opacity at the beginning. Or I can do it on the composite and transform, and I'm gonna do that because I think it might be faster in the end. Um, 
So yeah, first frame zero, and then make it just a piece. And I'm just gonna remove all of these composite and transform transitions and paste the other one. The thing is, I'm pretty sure with this version, it won't work yet. Uh, I'm gonna have to change the compositing track every time, but uh, I, it's still faster, I think. And I want V1 for each of them. By the way, if anybody knows why it doesn't work the way it used to, I would love to know. Like before, when you copied something that was compositing to V1, and you pasted it on another track, it was always on V1 and not like relative, 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 you know? So yeah, I, I wish I knew. Uh, I'm gonna pre-render again and we'll see at the end. Okay, so here's what that looks like. Oh, that's nice. I think I like it like this. Um, of course, you can change the parameters uh, and stuff like that. And it did take me a while. I will check how long it took me on the recording and I will tell you here on the screen. Uh, but it's not that long, you know, it's not that bad. But um, yeah, definitely something to consider. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and please like, comment, subscribe, I don't know, everything. And I will uh, see you next week. Bye bye.